Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform lookups with Power Query. Now let's say, for example, we have two tables here. We have a table, maybe these are sales folks, and these are the period, and there's the sales that they have. And we have another table here where we have the sales folks again, but this is just their ID and there's the employee ID. And what we want to do is bring this employee ID over here to this table. So we want to have this ID here. These are uh, instances where the employee ID show up several times because we have different quarters here. But here, the employee IDs, the ID for the employee and their IDs show up once. So they're kind of unique. So what we want to do is have something like this where we would have an employee ID here. Now, if this was a small table, we can probably perform this with uh, VLOOKUPs or we can do it with index and match or other type of lookup type of functions within Excel. But why would we do it with Power Query? Well, there's probably two main reasons I would explain why we do it in Power Query. And I just have this small table to kind of illustrate what Power Query can do. But as I mentioned before, there's probably two reasons why you would want to use Power Query. Now, the first reason is if you have large data sets. Let's say, for example, a million records, two million records. You probably wouldn't want to use VLOOKUP to do this because it's going to take a lot of processing power to perform this on large data sets. And the second reason probably is if you have repeating tasks. If this is something that you do on an ongoing basis, of course you can write a macro to do this. So if you're not good at macros and I'm not great at macros, you probably don't want to write a macro to do this uh, and basically repeat this, this task over and over again if you have records that are updated on an ongoing basis. So let me go ahead and show you how you can use Power Query to do lookups. So right now I have a table. So here I have my example of my sales file, basically the sales folks, their IDs, the period that the sales in and the sales number. And the next table I have is the ID and the employee ID. Now you may notice that these are two separate files. If you look up here, we have our employee ID file .xlsx and we also have our sales .xlsx. Now you can have both of these tables on the same a workbook, basically sheet one and sheet two, but in this case, I'm I'm pretending that this is on a different workbooks. So if you update one workbook, maybe it's on a your local folder, and maybe the other one is on a shared folder or whatnot. They're in different places. This would show you that particular example. So this is just for illustrative purposes, uh, having the files be different uh, workbooks. So I'm going to go ahead and open a new Excel uh, workbook. So here I am in a new workbook and actually let me go ahead and give you the kind of the overview of the steps that are needed to perform this. Let me go back into PowerPoint and show you what this looks like. Basically you're going to open a new workbook, then you're going to get the data from both tables. Then you're going to use Power Query, the Power Query merge feature to perform the lookup. And then after that, you're going to load a new table into uh, the workbook that you, the new workbook that we have. So let's go through the steps right now. So here we have Power Query. So for those that don't have Power Query, that don't see their Power Query tab, this is basically on Excel 20, 2010 or 2013. I'm using Excel 2013 right now. And if you don't have it, you might need to uh, download it if you're on 2010. I believe on 2013 it's already there, but you have to enable it. In either case, after you've downloaded it or if it's already there in your particular Excel version, you need to enable it. So basically, you can go ahead and just Google how to download Power Query, how to enable Power Query on your particular Excel. Uh, I'm not going to go through that, but uh, there's lots of resources on the web to, for the quick steps to do that. So we have Power Query here, and what we want to do is we want to get external data. So I'm going to get external data from a file. So I'm going to get it from the first Excel file. So once I click on that, I'm going to have uh, the browse for my file, and I have it here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and click OK open it and what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the Power Query Navigator and you can see that it's picked up the workbook and I only have one sheet there so it's picked up that sheet. Let me go ahead and click it. So right now it's picked up the table and I want to go ahead and click load to. So I'm going to go load to and then it's going to tell me where I want to load to. I really don't need to create a table right now. I just want to create a connection to that particular file. So I'm going to go ahead and click only create a connection and click load. And once, once it's done that, it's going to bring it up in my workbook query here. I might, actually, I might as well give it a name here. So you can see that if you, you hover over it, it, it kind of shows you uh, what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and go ahead and rename this. Let me see if I can rename it from here. No, let me go ahead and just click edit and go ahead and rename it here. I'll just call this sales so I know what it is. So I'll go ahead and click that. I'll go ahead and click uh, close and load and it will load it as a connection only since I did it did it previously. So I've loaded that particular sales 
table. Now I want to go ahead and load the employee ID table. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing. Under Power Query, go to From File and go ahead from Excel. And I'm going to go ahead and load the employee ID table. Click OK. And it's going to go ahead and go to the Navigator. Let me go ahead and select Sheet 1 here. And we see that our table shows up here. I'm going to go ahead and click Load 2 and also do the same thing. And I'm only going to create a connection here. Go ahead and click load and it's going to show up here again. Let me see if I can double click this and change it. No, I'll go up. I'm basically in editor mode. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to employee imp ID. So basically I've got the connection. Let me go ahead and close this since I created the loaded this only as a connection. I'll go ahead and close and load. I've got my correct table here. Close and load. And now you can see that workbook queries, it's queried two tables from two workbooks. So basically, it's got the sales and employee ID as a connection. So it's kind of hovering in kind of like a virtual memory when you really think about it in Excel for this particular workbook. So now what I want to do is I want to combine these two. And the combine tab here shows two ways to combine it, either as a merge or append. I'm going to use the merge because basically I'm merging these two files that have uh, different column fields and different column headers, and they're just going to merge the, the information there together. So I'm going to go ahead and click merge and it's going to give me another window that tells me which matching columns do I need to merge, which table and which matching columns. So the first one is going to be my sales. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it gives me my sales here. And the second one is I want to merge my employee ID. So after these two tables are selected, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to identify which particular uh, column and, and, and there's respective values in those columns do I need to match up and so this is basically when you think about a lookup or VLOOKUP or index match you're looking at the values for that particular column the, the, the row values so I'm gonna go ahead and select ID here and ID here and so my second column usually is going to be the one where I have my unique values or in my second table here uh, is where I would have my unique values my lookup column and this is gonna be an outer join basically I want all the values from the first table that match uh, from the second table. So once that's selected, I'll go ahead and click OK, and it's going to go through and merge those files. And you see here that uh, it looks like it didn't merge it, but what it did, what it did was create a new column with the table that has um, the employee ID table, all the columns in there. And I can expand that table by clicking on this particular icon. And it's going to bring up another window and say, well, uh, which columns do you want to bring over in the expansion? And I just want to bring over the uh, employee ID file because I already have the ID here in this column. So I just want to need to bring over an employee ID column. So here you can you can use the employee ID column as a prefix. Uh, you'll see what this looks like when, it, when that gets done. So basically it's added that there. Uh, usually I like to uncheck that. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, click on that and do it again. So I'm back in this window. Uh, I don't want the ID and I'm going to make sure that that's unchecked. Use the column uh, name as a prefix so I can change it later on. I don't need to do too much deletion of text. So I'll go ahead and click OK here. And I've got my employee ID here. Now you can see that it matches here, right? You have uh, Brian Lewis, uh, the ID here, and they've got their employee ID here. And once I'm done with that, now I can close and load. This is a new query. So I, I can actually, I'll just name this, uh, I'll give it a name, combined uh, sales and employee ID, right? And so I can go ahead and click close and load. It's going to put it into a new table here. And then I have my employee ID here. So the nice thing about this, in addition to what I've mentioned before, is if you have a large set of records, maybe even five, even half a million, uh, as long as it's really large, this becomes much quicker uh, instead of doing VLOOKUPs or index match. And also, if this is something where you do on an ongoing basis, if this is a daily, weekly, maybe monthly is not that bad, but daily or weekly, you don't want to go ahead and perform those VLOOKUPs again. All you want to do is basically update one of the files and refresh this. So what I mean by that, let's say we go into the sales work. So let's say we're in the sales workbook. Uh, we have a new employee. Let's call him John and then Smith and then Jay Smith, right? Jay Smith, and we have a Q1, maybe he was in Q2, and he had some sales of 500, right? So basically, after we save this file, go ahead and uh, press Control S to save. This saves this file in whatever directory that we have. If I go back into my uh, workbook where I did the query, where I did the merge, all I need to do is right click this table and click refresh, and John will show up. Unfortunately, he doesn't have an employee ID here. So let's say that uh, you entered that self information in first, and later on, a couple of days later, you have employee ID. So let me go into the employee ID file. 
So over here I'm in the employee ID file, I'm going to go ahead and put John Smith, and maybe employee ID is 1000, right? And then I, all I need to do is save this, Control S to save. Let me go back into my merged file. I'm in my merge file, I right click and go ahead and cl click refresh. And now you notice John Smith, the look employee ID number has been looked up and now provided in this table. So this is a great feature uh, in Power Query where you can do lookups uh, using the merge feature when you have large records, large data sets. And this is something that you do on a reoccurring basis. So you don't have to write any macros. You don't have to worry too much about manually doing this uh, and maybe making mistakes. Basically, this is all done for you using Power Query kind of on a semi-automated way. So there's how you can use Power Query to do a lookup. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.